out, and they had to be there at like 5.30 in the morning, ready to start harvesting. Okay, at different stages in the, um, the, the planting and the harvesting field, because it's so long, hard work, right? We talk about the work ethic of the farmer, because it's hard work, and there's a lot to do when it comes harvest time. And you have to start from sun up to sundown. That's those are half days, in, in case you're wondering. You know, they work half days all the time in, in Nebraska when we were there. <laughs> sun up to sundown. They're working around the clock because they have to get the work done. And that's what he's saying. Look, it's this huge harvest. There's fruit on the vine. There's the the the, the fields are ready. The corn is on the stock. We've got to get out there while we can. There's a lot of work to do. So go out to work and harvest. And that's what he's saying. Those who are following Jesus, that's the mission we are sent on. And there needs to be more of us. We've got to pray that God would raise up even more people who are willing to join in this journey of following after him and being sent on mission. It's a challenging thing. And he even says in verse 3, did you notice that? Go, I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. I'm sure you've seen some of the news stories about wolves in in Wyoming now that they've been reintroduced. They've made a great comeback, right? And farmers are angry. Ranchers are saying, hey, they're eating my lambs. Because a lamb in the face of a wolf is a dangerous thing, right? Right? And yet we are going out and sent out and it is dangerous. See, that's why this mission that Jesus is calling us to follow him on and sending us out on is a dangerous, challenging thing. He starts there. He said, it's going to be difficult. There are going to be wolves nipping at your heel, people who literally want to hurt you and perhaps kill you. They would like nothing more than for you to just go away. This is the journey that Jesus is calling. And, and if you just hear that, you're thinking, oh my gosh, this is so hard. This is so challenging. Where's the joy part, Matt? Where's the happiness? <laughs> well, that's what we're going to come to next because not only is this a challenging mission, but that you're going to begin to see that some will receive you and some reject you. This is important for us to see that there will be people who receive us. We will have friends on our journey. Look at verses 5 through 7 with me. As Jesus is sending these guys out, he says, When you enter a house, first say, Peace on this house. If someone who promotes peace is there, your peace will rest on them. If not, it will return to you. Stay there eating and drinking whatever they give you, for the worker deserves his wages. So these guys are going out into villages they have never set foot in before, and when they give the the common greeting of the day, Shalom, peace be with you. And for those who say, peace be with you, and they welcome them into their homes. They feed them. It's beginning to build some relationships with people. What you'll find out when you do go tell people that you're a follower of Jesus, that there will be other people who say, hey, I'm interested. Tell me more. That, that you will make new friends, that you'll find people in other churches. And one of the coolest things is when, if any of you guys have been on a global outreach trip and you've gone around the seas, uh, overseas, you will meet people in a different country that you just meet like that, and because they share the bond of a believer, you have a deep connection it's amazing you will make friends for life with people that don't speak your language that don't know your culture because we share jesus in common there's a fellowship that comes with it on the journey and this is a powerful thing that people are receptive to the kingdom of god that's one of the reasons why we promote community groups here so we can develop that kind of fellowship here that we can have friends that we can have people that will care about us deeply because you will find in those relationships some of the most important joy in your life There was an interesting study that came out a few years ago done uh, throughout um, Europe. And what they found that the number one factor, the number one factor for sustained happiness in a person's life, do you know what it was? If the person was a part of a church. It wasn't that they were volunteering or serving or felt like they had their purpose through work. No, no, no. It was that they were a part of a church community. Because the depths of the relationship that can be formed with people who you share the deepest things with are the most important for your life. It it leads to lower amounts of depression in people's lives. Yeah, it'll still be there, but you're going to have people that will encourage you and build you up and pray for you and you can reach out to when you're hurting. See, these relationships you form on the journey will bring joy to your life. Perhaps greater, as that study found, than almost anything else we'll find. Isn't that fascinating? Isn't that fascinating? And Jesus knew that, yes, I'm sending you out like sheep among wolves. It's going to be dangerous. It's going to be challenging. It's going to be hard work. And yet, you're going to have co-laborers alongside you. People will help you and build you up. And that's some of the most important relationships in our life, and it will bring us joy. But as we're seeing, there's also the challenge that some people will reject you. Jesus um, just told them straight up what was going to happen. Look at verses 10 and 11 with me. But when you enter a town and are not welcomed, 
Go into its streets and say, even the dust of your town we wipe from our feet as a warning to you. There will be people who reject you as followers of Jesus, who, who try to change you. Maybe if you just didn't believe that one thing, you'd fit in really well with us. They try to get rid of you, but, but Jesus says, no, 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 you've got to proclaim the good news to them. Stand out as a follower of Jesus. But then some people will just reject you, and you have to move on. You have to move on. That wiping the dust off is a sign of judgment on them. But you're saying, hey, I'm going to let God handle them, not me. I'm moving on to the next place, to the next receptive heart. You know, sometimes in my own life, we, we can kind of focus on the, the really ardent atheist. Anybody have those people in your life, maybe in your family? They hate Christians. And we try to focus on them and argue with them. Well, sometimes we just need to say, hey, I love you. If you're wanting to talk, we can talk some more. Let's move on to someone that's a little more receptive, right? And, and then hopefully God will work in that heart, continue to pray for them. But we say, hey, let's move on to the people that are a little more receptive because we will be rejected. We will be mocked. We will be hurt and betrayed even by people. That's part of the journey. But what I really want you to see in this section is that both the th journey and the destination are worth it. We're talking about the radical call of Jesus on our life, the radical obedience he demands from us, and yet the journey and the destination are worth it. Both of them. This is what Jesus is going to continue to say. Look down all the way at verse 17. I know I'm skipping a section. But look at verse 17. It says, after this, after these guys had gone two by two out into uh, these villages they've never been to, they, they're preaching the gospel, they're healing the sick, it says in verse 17, the 72 returned with what? Joy. With joy. Let's say that out loud. With joy. And said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. They're saying, this is challenging work. It's difficult. We're surrounded by wolves trying to nip at our heels and eat us alive. There are people that reject us. It is difficult work. It's labor. And yet, they return with joy. And the word joy is the deepest type of happiness. True happiness. They're saying, wow, look what we've been able to do and accomplish in your name. This is incredible. We never dreamed of doing something this purposeful in our lives. And this joy is there on the journey for these men. It's not once they die, they can be happy, is it? They're filled with joy now. And I don't want us to miss this. You see, uh, it's in these hardships, it's in these challenges that sometimes we find the most joy possible. Somebody, uh, you know, a couple months ago sent me uh, this TED Talk by a... Uh, uh, a POW from Vietnam, Charlie Plum. And it, it was a powerful story, but he, as he talked about it, he said, you know, there was over 500 of us that were POWs in Vietnam who have returned to the United States. And what's fascinating is that they look, compare the, the POWs to soldiers in Vietnam. And, and they said that among soldiers at large, there's 36% of people returning with PTSD. And yet among those who were prison of, prisoners of war, tortured, hurt, for years, some of them, there was only 4% PTSD. And they were saying because when they were in there, they would work together, that they had to band together, that they build hope in their life, and a lot of them turned to God in faith, as did that Charlie Plum. And what they found was that they've created a whole new term psychologists have, not PTSD, but PTG, post-traumatic growth. Because these men have grown and developed, and a study done by Yale has found that those people are some of the most purposeful, sustained happiness through the rest of their lives, even with the difficulties and terrible things they experienced. Okay? I want you to see this because the, the challenge of following in Jesus, it's radical. It's going to cost you everything. It's going to be difficult. You will be rejected. You will be hurt. It, it will be hard, and yet it will be even greater than had you not followed Jesus. You guys picking up what I'm putting down here? What Jesus is saying is that in this journey, in the hardship, there is great joy because of what you will accomplish. And it will be at the destination. Okay, The journey and the destination is filled with joy. Uh, Jesus says to them, hey, you guys, I know demons were even submitting your name. I know great things were happening because of what you were doing. But he says in verse 20, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Saying, yeah, it's great that you're accomplishing all these things, but our true joy should be found in our relationship with the Father who loves us and has written our name in heaven, who has forgiven all of our sin. You know, just a few weeks ago, we talked about this book. Remember the book of life? 
We saw this in Daniel chapter 12 and again in Revelation uh, at the very end, this book that contains the names of those who have been chosen by God, who Jesus has died for to forgive them of their sins, who have accepted that gift of eternal life and will forever be in eternity where there's no more sickness, sorrow, pain, or death. And Jesus said, that is what you rejoice in, take joy in, find happiness that your name, that you have this relationship that no matter what happens to you physically, to your body, you know that your soul will live on forever. This is true joy in the destination as well, because that is pretty amazing. Jesus says it's in the, the journey and the destination. You know, uh, we, when we train and we work hard in sports, you know it's for the championship. When you study hard, those of you who are in school, you work really hard to get your degree so that you can pursue the career that you've always wanted. It, it, women, you know that you go through the pains of childbirth, the, the labor, so that you can have the child on the other end. Well, we go through the trials of this life. Sometimes they're hard in the moment, but we know we look forward to that destination. That it will be great. That it will be worth it. Nietzsche, <laughs> the, the great German philosopher, said that he who has a why to live for can bear with almost any how. He who has the why to live for can bear with almost any how. See, the, what we are doing is purposeful in this life. Following Jesus and helping others come to follow Jesus is the most purposeful thing that you can ever do because it impacts eternity. It impacts people's eternity and ours as well. This is so purposeful. Look at what Jesus says now in verse um, 21. I love this. At that time, Jesus, full of what? Joy. At that time, Jesus, full of joy through the Holy Spirit, said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. It says that Jesus was full of joy. Now, we often look at the opposite side of Jesus as a man of sorrows, as the scripture describes him, of the difficulties in his life. But here we see him full of joy, complete happiness. He's probably laughing and excited, even just like singing. Can you just imagine that? Some of us can't, because all our life, all that we've pictured of Jesus is a dour man who doesn't smile, who, who is prepared to go on the cross. Maybe you even see that image of him on the cross. But Jesus was a man of joy, just as he was a, a man of sorrows. He was a man full of joy here. Uh, years ago, in, in 1969, there was a, uh, a, a piece of art, and you can see it on the screen if you're watching online. You can probably see it a little bit clearer. But it, it's a, a piece of art called The Laughing Christ. The Laughing Christ. And it got kind of famous, because do you know where it was published? Playboy magazine. See, Hugh Hefner saw it, and all his life he had thought of Jesus as this dour, uh, sober man that w w was never smiling. But he saw this, and he was so uh, uh, amazed by it, astonished by it, that he had to publish it. Fascinating, right? Don't go look it up. Okay? Uh, but the point is, it, it astonishes us sometimes to think that Jesus was full of joy in this life. But he was. He was a man of happiness. He would have hung out with his friends as they went from town to town, and they would have seen people's lives transformed by the power of the gospel, the sick healed, the demons cast out of those who were hurting, that this joy would have filled his heart as he got to see his disciples begin to experience the relationship with God that he had. And that's why he said that. I praise you, Father, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned. There's a lot of people who try to look into this, and they don't get it. And yet these little children, these disciples, we who are followers of Jesus... Have a relationship with our Father in heaven. And that should fill us with the fullness of joy. Right now. I've had a few things on my mind this week. And this morning even, I, was just, I just couldn't focus. And I try to get ready and I kind of have a routine, but it just wasn't working. So on my drive here, I was praying and I just started singing a worship song. I started singing, Lord, I need you. And as I sang it, I was... I, I don't know if you guys have experienced this, but I was just filled with a, a joy again. The joy of the Lord. It says in the Old Testament that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And I think that's a powerful thing that you feel that strength and that fortitude and that emotion. Yes, emotion as you, your affections, as your heart is driven to our Father in heaven. See, Jesus felt it in that moment and he wants us to experience it as well in the journey. The destination is great, but it's in the journey as well. Find joy in the journey, Jesus is saying. 
And look now at the end of this passage in verses 23 and 24. Jesus says, Blessed are the eyes that see what you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings wanted to see what you see, but did not see it. And to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. That word blessed can be translated as happy. Okay? I want you to do this next time you see blessed in the Bible, and it's all over the place, hundreds of usage. You could translate that as the word happy. This is the happiness that comes from God, what I call joy, what I believe the scriptures refer to as joy. When he says blessed, it's not just like, oh, lucky you. No, it's God wants to give you a happiness. And Jesus is saying is you are happy in your heart, in your souls, if you have seen me, if you have believed in me, because prophets and kings for centuries and millennia have longed to see me, the Messiah who has come walking among you, and now you have seen it. You should be truly happy about this. And we, though we don't have Jesus walking among us in the flesh, we look back to it. We have heard the good news. We know that the Savior has come, that the Messiah has gone before us to show us the way to eternal life. And when we look to that Jesus, it should fill us with that fullness of joy that we can be called blessed, we can be called happy here in this life because we know the Father through the Son because that is the only way to the Father. So that's why I want to tell you today to find joy in the journey. Find joy in the journey. Following Jesus will be filled with hardship and difficulties and challenges. The mission is huge. The harvest is plentiful and the workers are few. And yet as we go in there to labor, to work, to go through hardship, to suffer, to sacrifice, it's for joy. It's why the missionary David Livingston said, I never made a sacrifice though he went to Africa and died because of the joy that God had filled him with on the journey. And I don't want you to miss this. This is so important. That's why G.K. Chesterton would say that joy is the gigantic secret of the Christian. I don't want you to miss it. Don't keep it that secretive. See, this is the joy that Jesus and his disciples experienced here as they served him. And I want you to experience it as you serve Jesus as well and follow him. Seriously, that's why we, we encourage you guys to get plugged in somewhere. Uh, 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 at our church, you can join a serve team. If you go to stapletonchurch.com serve, there's a form that you can fill out. So we can find a place where you might fit because when you are serving, when you're using your spiritual gifts, when you're using your natural talents, you find, wow, that was exciting, that was fun. Uh, I, I'm glad I got to do that. Uh, I'm glad, you know, those, those people who are right now behind this, <laughs> this window working on the computers, they can use their skills, their, their IT skills to, to serve the church. And I believe it fills them with joy. I've talked with them about it. It fills me with joy when I can, can preach the word of God, when I can be with you guys and talk with you. And, and I want you guys to experience that. I know right now we have a, a couple down in Ecuador, Kevin and Anita Gross. We've talked about them a little bit this, this summer because Anita is actually Ecuadorian and she just moved to the States like last year. But Ecuador is getting hit so hard by COVID-19 right now. Many of Anita's family members have died from COVID-19. And the economy has shut down, so many of the people who are living paycheck to paycheck can't make it to the next month. So Kevin and Anita's community group banded together. And they, they, they banded together and they said, how can we help? And, and Anita had some ideas and they ended up bringing, I think it was like eight different bags filled with stuff. A lot of you guys contributed as well. They brought money down there. And, and Anita has sent back some pictures this week because she and Kevin have been able to help 14 different families with uh, almost a month's worth of supplies with medicine and with food to help them get by. And they're so happy. You see the pictures of these people crying, hugging. And, and Anita has sent, texted me some, some things and sent me some emails. They're just filled with joy as they serve God and get to serve other people. And I want you to experience that as well. That's why Jesus would even say it's more blessed to give than to receive. It's more blessed. It's more happy. You are more joyful when you give and when you serve other people. There's joy in the journey. So whether it's going overseas or going on a go team or on a serve team, or, or some of you may pick up your whole life and move across the country or the world to serve Jesus, or it may just be down the street at Denver Rescue Mission or at your business, wherever it is, when you go follow after Jesus, join him on mission, you will find the greatest joy that you could ever have in your life. George Bernard Shaw, uh, I love this quote, I've shared it before, George Bernard Shaw says, this is the true joy of life being used up for a purpose, being a force of nature instead of a feverish, selfish little clot of ailments and grievances, complaining that the world will not devote itself to making you happy. 
See, I want you to experience that fullness of joy of serving others, of giving your life to an incredible purpose. And that is what Jesus did. You know, we do call Jesus the man of sorrows, yet it tells us in Hebrews chapter 12 that for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. Even when Jesus went and gave his life to die on the cross in our place to provide us atonement and forgiveness for our sins and a purchase for us a redemption and eternal life. When Jesus did that, he did it for joy, for his joy and the joy of the whole world. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame. And he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus did it all for joy, for yours and his. Because it's the fullness of joy that we can find in our journey with Jesus. So yes, there's a great cost to following Jesus. It's hard, it's difficult. But God doesn't want you to just be holy. He also wants you to be happy. And he knows that in the holiness is the happiness. In the journey is the true joy. It's not just at the destination. It's all along the way. And he wants you to experience that, to know it deeply. Dietrich Bonhoeffer. We we looked at his quote last week when he said, uh, when Christ calls him in, he, he bids him come and die. An incredible challenge, right? And yet here Dietrich Bonhoeffer says, where will the call to discipleship lead those who follow it? What decisions and painful separations will it entail? And he goes on, only Jesus Christ, who bids us follow him, knows where the path will lead. But we know that it will be a path full of mercy beyond measure. Discipleship is joy. Discipleship is joy. So whatever God is calling you to do, sometimes it's specific things. Sometimes it's to start that business, to, to work with that nonprofit, to volunteer time, to adopt a child. Whatever God is calling you to do to serve him on mission, to proclaim the good news to a neighbor, whatever it is, discipleship is joy. And it will be the greatest joy you could ever experience. And I want you to have that in your life. There are some of you who are listening to my voice right now. Maybe you're watching online, hearing me, or, or just here in person, and then you're ready to start that journey. I want to encourage you to do that. I'm going to put a prayer up on the screen. I'm going to say it, and you can repeat it after me. And what I want to do, if you already are a follower of Jesus, would you just say this prayer with those people? Give them a little courage, right? Those of you who are like, I've already made this decision, but let's give some boldness to the people who have never done it, okay? And let's make that decision for some of you today for the first time. Would you say this prayer after me? Father, I know that I am a sinner. And ask for your forgiveness. I believe Jesus died for my sins and rose from the dead. I declare that Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Please give me the gift of eternal life. I invite your spirit to live in my heart. Help me find joy in my journey following you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you said that prayer for the first time, I want you to text the word follow to that number on the screen, 720-707-1757. I'm sorry, 7157. 720-707-7157. And we just want to encourage you on that journey. And now um, what we're going to do is finish uh, up by I'm, I'm sending you guys out, just like Jesus sent out the 72, right? Sent out on mission, on this journey, filled with joy. I want to send you guys out from today. So would everybody please stand up? Would everybody please just get up on your feet, even if you're watching at home, get up off your sofa. If you're lounging in bed still, it's time to get up. It's 9.45. Would you please stand up? And let me say a prayer for you. Lord God, I pray over these men and women here today, these children who are hearing the call to follow you. I pray that you would lead them I pray that even in the hardship, you would show them the joy, whether it's on the other side or in the middle of it. For those who are struggling right now and they say, I don't feel any happiness right now, Lord God, would you infuse their heart with the joy of the Lord? Would you give them that strength that they need to keep moving forward and carry on? And I pray as we all go out today that you would fill us with the joy of the Lord, that we'd find fellowship with our brothers and sisters that are around us, and would we go out to serve you with all that we are. Lord Jesus, thank you for going before us and even dying on the cross for our joy. I pray, Lord, that we would not only wait till heaven to experience that, but we would begin to experience it now. Give us the taste of joy now. I pray that you be with us as we go out from here in Jesus' name. Amen.
Amen. All right, thanks for coming. We are going to see you next week.